I'm Tom Baker, this is Chasing Cars, and this is the new Lexus LX570S, probably the final special edition of the current generation 200 series Lexus LX that we'll see before the new 300 series based LX arrives likely next year. The Lexus LX has long been the fanciest Toyota Land Cruiser that money can buy. And among the LX range here in Australia, the LX570S sits at the top of that tree. Now, this car comes in at just under $170,000 before on-road costs, and that's a lot. But given Toyota dealers are currently charging people over 180 grand for a Land Cruiser 200 Sahara, well, maybe you'd see this as something of a bargain, depending on your perspective. Now the LX does have one really cool unique feature over and above the Land Cruiser 200 and that is namely the availability of a 5.7 litre petrol V8. Now in America you could get a 200 series cruiser with that engine but here in Australia the Land Cruiser is diesel only and when a petrol was available it wasn't as big as the beast under the bonnet of the Lexus. So if you want the biggest and the baddest Toyota Land Cruiser based vehicle well you have to go for the Lexus LX and the 570S includes some nice goodies inside the cabin too. And that's because unlike other LX 570s, the S can be had with this really gorgeous garnet colored leather interior, like a burgundy red. You can choose black instead, but I'm not sure why you would because this actually suits the car really nicely. And it sits underneath a choice of either white or black outside. And like all Lexus paints, the LX 570 absolutely shimmers. It's night and day between this and a Land Cruiser 200 for the luster of the paint finish. Also outside, you'll notice the S-specific grille, which has 70 L-shaped bars in it, which are kind of cool. The new 21-inch wheel designs as well. And then something that you feel on the road, and we'll discuss soon, are the performance dampers front and rear. Now, they certainly don't transform the LX570 into a sporty SUV, but they do help rein in the body control just a bit. But more on that later. First of all, let's remind ourselves what the interior of the Lexus LX is like, because it's actually very nice. It is showing its age, it is a little bit dated in some ways, but the quality is the name of the game in here. You know that you're sitting in a vehicle that has been screwed together with the highest standards of quality, and you just get the impression that this LX I'm sitting in right now will still be on the road in Australia in 20 or 30 years from now. And certainly looking at the amount of LX 470s from the late 1990s that you still see on the road, I think that would probably stand up to scrutiny. That is mainly in how tightly screwed together everything is, but it's also in the material quality used in here. Quite simply, this doesn't feel like any old Toyota Land Cruiser. Everything is plush, soft, creamy leathers, beautiful Shimamuku wood in this car in a gray finish. That looks good too and suits the red leather upholstery. You know. Everything feels expensive and it should do because this car does brush up against 170 grand before on-road costs. It's certainly not cheap. That being said, compared to something like a full fat Range Rover or a Mercedes-Benz GLS, the LX570 arguably does offer relative value for money. Now, the technology in this car doesn't feel as up to date as it does in the aforementioned European rivals. This is not a touchscreen, it's controlled by the sort of two generation old version of Lexus Remote Touch Now down here between the seats. Certainly you do get used to it, it's not the worst in the world, the navigation works okay, the multimedia is functional but it could be much better, particularly if the screen was brought further forward and had big touch sensitive uh, targets on it. And I'm sure with the next version of the Lexus LX, we'll see precisely that. For now, it's entirely bearable, particularly when you're listening to your music through the Mark Levinson reference surround sound system, which sounds really, truly excellent in this vehicle. Now there is an array of buttons across the dash here to control the climate system and also specific controls for the off-roading abilities of this car. We do have air suspension on the LX570. We've also got low range controls. We've got crawl control, a bunch of other items taken from the Land Cruiser that mean the LX is actually very capable off-road. Though with the 570S trim sporting that really low front bar, that's probably something you'd want to customize if you were planning to take this vehicle seriously off-road. Now, despite this vehicle being absolutely huge, practicality up front is a little bit limited. We've only got two smallish cup holders here. We do have wireless smartphone charging. That's a fairly recent addition. 
We've got a fridge underneath here, which is very cool, but no additional storage. And the door bins themselves aren't the biggest in the business. Now it is worth noting, the LX570 may seem absolutely enormous, and it is. It's very wide and very tall, but it's actually not especially long. Something like a Land Rover Defender or even a Mazda CX-9 is considerably longer than this vehicle. And we'll keep that in mind when we have a look at the room in the second row. The relatively short length of the LX being under five meters goes some way to explain why the room here in the second row perhaps isn't as big as you might expect when you look at the outside of the car. Certainly it's still very bearable, but the combination of the relative shortness of the cabin in this vehicle and also the high floor plan, given this is actually a body on frame full -wheel drive rather than a unibody SUV, means the back seat isn't actually that ideal. So for myself at six foot, headroom's no trouble. I've got plenty of that despite there being a sunroof up front. Leg room, there are several inches, but there's absolutely no toe room to speak of because that front seat is right on the deck. And as you can see, my knees are just floating here. So as a long distance cruiser, this is a car where you actually wanna be in the first row rather than the second row. But at least you'll be staying very cool back here. Not only does this vehicle have a superb air conditioning system, there's also vents everywhere, down here between the seats and up here on the ceiling for those in the second row, plus additional ceiling vents for those in the third row, which we'll have a look at in just a moment. Now the petrol versions of the Lexus LX also get this rear seat entertainment system. There's an HDMI input down here, just underneath the air vents, and you can also stick some headphones in there. Uh, and so you could set up a games console back here, a DVD player, something like that, if you wanted to do so. But of course, most people these days are just gonna buy a couple of iPads for the kids, which have a much broader range of possibilities. So personally, I wouldn't be surprised if the next LX just has some kind of tablet mount here where you can bring your own device. Between the seats though, we have a pretty lush armrest, very substantial unit. We've got controls for rear outboard heated and cooled seats, just like up front. We've also got a separate fan zone and two separate temperature zones back here. We've got deployable cup holders and a separate section here with a little bit of storage and a remote for the entertainment system here in the back. The actual leather quality back here is exceptional. Soft touch materials continue on the doors. We have blinds to keep the sun off the faces of passengers back here on long drives. And of course, this is a three row vehicle. The diesel version of the LX isn't, but the petrol cars do get extra seats in the back and I'll show you how much room I have with a bit of overlay here. Purchase the new S version of the LX570 and you'll find that you do get a little badge here on the back to remind people behind the car that this is the very top of the LX range. You also get an electric tailgate as standard, though it's certainly not the quickest in the world. And in fact, only the top portion is truly powered. The bottom section is at least damped and just drops down really nicely there. Now, as you can see, like all Land Cruiser 200 series with a third row, the LX570's back or way back seats actually fold up against the side of the vehicle, which means they take up a fair amount of boot space the reason they're like that is because we have a spare wheel underneath the vehicle as well as a massive fuel tank. So there's not a huge amount of packaging room left over to stow those third row seats in the floor. It'll be interesting to see whether the next version of the LX and Land Cruiser continues with this formula. What we do have though is electronic controls in the LX to drop those third row seats down. Mind you, you then have to reach in and pull the seats up yourself. Something like a Mercedes-Benz GLS does that whole thing electronically for you and indeed stores the seats in the floor, though it doesn't have the same innate off-roading capabilities as a Cruiser or an LX. Now, when you've got the third row seats in place, you're left with 259 liters of room, so really quite small. Again, it's that relatively short length of the LX coming into play there. But if you stow the third row seats boot space is bumped up to 710 litres, which isn't too bad. And then to close up back here, it's just the reverse. A manual lift of the lower portion of the tailgate. Top one closes electronically, slowly, and then we're ready to jump into the driver's seat and see what the LX570S is like on the road. So what is the Lexus LX570S like to drive? Well, in a lot of ways, jumping back into an LX is like meeting an old friend again after an extended absence. 
like every other 200 series Land Cruiser, there's just a relaxed demeanor about the way the LX570 goes about its business and it just puts you at ease as soon as you get up here into this enormous vehicle with a huge comfortable seat and a entirely adequate powertrain. Now, if you are buying something like this and it's the biggest vehicle you've ever owned, there will absolutely be an adjustment. It's huge. It's not that long as we've already discussed in the video, but it is very wide. It is very tall. You sit on top of it. Um, the seat is still comfortable and supportive, but you very much sit on this vehicle looking out over the world, looking out over everything else. There's a BMW X5 in front of me right now and I can tell you every speck of dust on its roof because we're that much higher than that vehicle. That being said, the LX is actually more wieldy than you might expect given that fact. This doesn't drive like a truck, it does drive like a very large SUV and like a frame vehicle as well. The body pitches and rolls more than you'll be used to if you uh, currently have something like a Lexus RX which is fundamentally like a car, it's a unibody vehicle whereas an LX, like a regular Land Cruiser, is a frame vehicle, there is a separate chassis underneath and then a body sitting on top. So there's more float, more roll, more pitch than in a regular car. Of course, that gives this vehicle really good articulation off-road, but if you are gonna take your LX off-road, you'll wanna pull off that fancy front end and put a proper front bar on it because at the moment, it's actually really too close to the ground at the front end. That's all there for visual effect, both on the regular LX and especially on the I suppose vaguely sporty S, which this is, but um, ultimately for anybody that enjoys off-roading, it looks ridiculous and it's the first thing that you would change. But there's not much else that I think would need to be changed on this car and that's why I'm so interested to see what the next LX and the next Land Cruiser is like because in many ways, uh, this car has aged very well and it doesn't actually feel that old. The engine under the bonnet is very traditional, a 5.7 litre petrol V8 making 270 kilowatts of power and 530 newton meters of torque. So what you see is what you get with this engine. It's a huge petrol engine. Uh, it's really understressed. Um, it feels like there's heaps of headroom uh, to do things to it if you wanted to, but also it's just content to be extremely wafty and just glide around either in town or on the highway um, at low revs pretty much all the time. Now, if you do need to merge or overtake someone on a country road, you will need to wind it out and it sounds good as you do it. But almost all of the time, I found myself just, just wafting, just driving gracefully, because ultimately that's where a vehicle like this feels like it's within its comfort zone. Now, you can also get a diesel LX. It's cheaper than the petrol. That makes 200 kilowatts of power, 650 meters of torque, from its twin turbo V8. Uh, it's also a really good engine, but that car only has two rows. It doesn't get the rear screens. There are a few other elements of spec that it doesn't get. It's a perfect uh, luxury car for gray nomads, if I can use that term. Uh, but if you do want the most flexibility out of your LX, the petrol V8 is the obvious choice. Now, you hear petrol V8, you hear almost three tons, and you think the fuel consumption must be crazy and it can be if you drive this thing like you stole it but if you do drive it gracefully like how i think works for a car like this you can control the fuel consumption pretty easily on the highway it'll do like 13 liters per 100 kilometers which isn't that bad all things considered and in town you can actually keep it under 20 without too much effort um you know clearly those numbers are high relative to everything else on the market pretty much but perhaps it's not quite as bad as you might have expected. The diesel will do 30% better pretty much all the time, however. Now, the handling is okay. The LX570S has performance dampers front and rear, and that kind of helps this thing turn, and I suppose ride with a little bit more focus, but largely this is an isolating experience. You know, the steering is pretty slow, pretty vague, but you very quickly become used to how much steering you need to put into this car, Plus, you get a perfect view out over the nose. You know where it's pointing. You get a feel for it actually really quite quickly. The ride is awesome. Uh, we're on air suspension in the LX, uh, so it's a better setup for comfort than what you get in a 200 series Land Cruiser. And it just, you know, your eyes see a bump. You feel a very slight shudder through the frame. It's not, you know, not totally insulated from bumps, but it's pretty good. It rides better than just about anything else on the road. 
and it totally reflects that super relaxing character. Now, one area where the LX is dating and where the new model will make an impact is in terms of safety features. Uh, we've got some basic stuff. We've got lane departure warning, adaptive cruise, basic forward AEB, but we don't have stuff like rear AEB. We do have blind spot monitoring. We do have a 360 degree camera. We don't have lane centering or anything like that. So expect to see the next Land Cruiser beefing up the driver aids to make this an altogether safer car and one that causes less fatigue on distance drives as well. So those are my opinions on the Lexus LX 570S. No doubt there's a role for the LX in the Australian motoring landscape. It's the nicest Land Cruiser you can buy. It's durable, it feels like it'll survive the apocalypse, and it's actually a very relaxing vehicle to drive around. Though, unless you have shares in big oil, you'd have to closely consider the diesel V8 as well as this petrol V8, which certainly likes a drink. It'll be fascinating to see what Lexus do next with the LX, Though if the current formula appeals to you, you ought to get one quickly because we know that this generation will be wrapping up very soon indeed. Now, let me know what you think of the Lexus LX down below the video. While you're there, make sure to hit subscribe and the notification bell. And as always, thanks for watching, Chasing Cars.